I played a queen d8 Scandinavian today. Been trying to play a queen a5 because it's it's been helping me. Uh, the line here is quite interesting. I think it's knight first, then you go a b if your opponent plays b4. Okay. My opponent is trying to be interesting here. D4 is usually what they play. Hmm. Slightly different line than I'm used to. I mean, his king side is weak, so I'm even thinking about still going for that whole idea with this. You know what? Let's do that. Let, let's go for that whole like. I don't think this works. I think it works when like the knight is there or something like. That. He has to develop his knight. This allows me to develop with tempo. Not really with tempo because he can like play this. I can play this here and then come back this way, but I don't think that's like a good idea. So I want to like play it a little bit passively. Castle and then like maybe develop my knights some ways. Halfway to Tuesday. Yeah, so mm, I remember this position kind of. I do remember this position kind of. Uh, okay, so now this is possible, right? It, originally, so these, these are some things you should notice in chess position. Now, it doesn't mean I'm winning by any stretch of the, my imagination, but these are the things that inform your decisions, right? People always wonder, like, how do, what do I do in chess? There are principles and ideologies and theories that follow a chess position, right? When you know those ideologies, you can use them. So think about think about chess like um, math, right? I, I think I've said it before, but every symbol in math gives you an indication of what you are supposed to do, right? So you see the cross sign, you know, by cross, I mean the, the plus sign. You, you, you know that it's an addition work you're supposed to do. You see those differentiation symbols. Like the moment you see a sign, you know what to do. So there are many signs in chess that help you to know what to do. And that's how you do your, your, your planning. And that's one of the, you know, the pieces, right? So originally, my, I, I couldn't play bishop here for, which would stop me. But my opponent has what we call attackers versus defenders. If the attackers are equal to the defenders, it's not a good idea. Attackers must be more than the defenders. Defenders must be equal to the attackers. So he is defending this square, and he can defend this square two times, and I can attack it two times, which is not a good idea, right? So I should be very careful about that. But now he has lost an attacker of that square, which makes this move viable. Now, this move doesn't win me the game. The opponent's king goes in this way. But the reason I like this move is because now my two bishops are very active and are in positions where my opponent will not feel comfortable, right? So I can play this move with check. This move no longer works because now he has just one defender versus my two attackers. Something like queen takes, doesn't really matter. I trade off the queens, but then I win a pawn. I, tell, I know I just moved my bishop, but this square just seems nice. I want that square. I want it, I want it. Then my opponent makes a move and I'm like, oh wait, I actually missed everything. <laughs> I really, I really do hate it. Yeah, I know I just moved my bishop, but I would have wanted my bishop there a long time ago. But now that the knight has moved, that square just looks like my niece would say, yummy, yummy. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, now I have like an interesting idea here with like knight here. Of course, it doesn't work now. Always take note of what works and what doesn't work before you put yourself in a bad position. But the bishop sacrifice here, it doesn't work now. But the bishop sacrifice. <laughs> okay. I think I should just play it slow. I could try and force the issue to try and get like my knight here. I could try and force the issue, but I don't think so. Uh, I don't know. 
I want to play this move, but I think I want to slow it down a bit. I don't know how my opponent is going to push this point. He's, I, okay, yeah, this is what he might do. But this knight can't really attack me. He can't play this way, but then I just slot it back here, which is another reason why I like this opening, this variation a bit. Yes, but I'm down on time, and that is me. I am a John Bartholomew follower. So I'm always down on time. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But then, where is this bishop going to go to, right? It's still going to be a passive bishop, in my opinion. So you have to play something else to give the bishop room to breathe. And in that time, maybe I can figure something out. If I go knight here so that I can take, and if takes, then I bring, bring my knight here. I don't think that works. I just feel like that's passive. And I can also play here knight takes and then go queen takes, which is something I would like to play. So what about this? Does that work? Because if I play this, I don't think he's going to take. But if I take and he takes, then he's just getting an attack on my squares. And I don't like that. I actually... Hmm. I have a plan... Oh, actually, it doesn't work. I actually like the bishop defends that square. That sucks. Okay, if I lose this, I'm going to lose it on time. That's for sure. He takes. Interesting. Hmm. Is my knight just not useful there? Nah, let's let's connect the rooks. I like that this is just some annoying pressure on me somehow. It's so it's not annoying, it's nagging pressure. I don't need to keep the bishops there, but I could try to. I'm looking at pawn push, right? And why pawn push? If pawn here, then knight here. Just dressing up my opponent a bit. I don't have enough time to think about this. Okay, you know what? Let's play this move. Okay. One push, right? I'm blocking my own bishop, but I think it's fine. Uh, now I, I can't play something like this. Bishop here seems like it's a move, but it's not. Because if you play pawn push, I'm going to take. It's not a move. And if you play something like rook here, I'm going to play pawn push. And if you play something like rook here, I'm just going to play rook takes. And yeah. Tactics. <clears throat> so this position should be winning for me. Rook here, pawn push. Bishop takes does nothing in that line. Yeah. My opponent just went straight for it. His bishop was doing nothing. He wanted to force the bishop out. Messed himself up royally. That's how it goes. Now, I still am um, two minutes, <laughs> four minutes down on the clock. So even though I have a slightly better position now, it's all but over. Now, I have to like think super speed. Else, I'm in trouble. Hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, so I could immediately see the bishop move there because like many moves ago, I mentioned it. Like my opponent would want to get his bishop back, but he can't. I mentioned it long ago. <laughs> so you, you can see how the calculation is. And you can try doing what I'm doing. It's not just because I stream. Actually, I talk when I'm on my own. <laughs> yeah, tr um, try and verbalize your thought process. It helps you. It, it helped me 
right? Of course, when you get used to it, you can stop verbalizing your, your chest, your thought process. But yeah, I don't do that during OTB tournaments. <laughs> but it's something I do on my own. I do feel, I talk to myself when I'm playing alone. Uh, I'm looking into what my opponent can do in the meantime. That's just a blunder of a queen. There's, there's no reason why I should disturb myself with that. Uh, I have a very devious plan here. I'm going to threaten me. He's going to block with his bishop. <laughs> and I'm going to open the other attack. Even if he blocks it this way, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to play pawn push. Even if he plays pawn push, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to play pawn push. Like I said, it doesn't really matter. Because now I play bishop tech. And now this bishop that was going to block can no longer block. You play this move, it doesn't exist. You play this move, I still play bishop check. Your king comes in here, I still take. It's over. He chose to lose the queen. Like, that was like the most awkward option you would ever pick. I don't know why you do that. <laughs> He just chose to lose his queen, and I'm like, what? If, if this was the, the video, that the caption would be... Uh, okay, I actually don't know the caption. Kaz really beating my opponent. So you see, I've calculated everything. I don't need to really go through these lines anymore. It's very simple. If king comes in here, queen takes. It's, it's all simple. There's nothing more to calculate. Bishop can't stop anything. And you, you can see, like, this is the beauty of, like, the whole thing. is where this whole thought process start, started from, right? Everything happened as I wanted it to. Like, it started long ago. And it's because my opponent played Ben Van Gogh's worst pawn ever. He said never push the F-pawn. And once he pushed the F-pawn, like, the, 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 I was expecting did not come to pass. Right, he did not play the opening position I was expecting, but um, and knight here, then they go d4, then you go this way, then they go knight here, then uh, b5, pawn, uh, b5, uh, bishop to b3, then you play the interesting move here, c5. Right, you play the interesting move here, c5. c5 is the one I'm talking about because if you choose to ignore this move, I'm trapping your bishop. Some people play this, which is fine. Uh, the point is not really. That right. The point is, um, okay. Sorry. The the point here. Is, this is what you actually want. You take here, forcing your opponent to maybe take with the king. Eventually, you win this pawn. It's not really a lost pawn. And this is a very nice and active position, right? I know I get very good positions out of, out of like this kind of opening sequence. So I I felt like okay, yeah. I I felt this is what I was looking for when my opponent played in this line. I was like, okay, this is fine. Uh, but then he plays f4. And it's the same idea I played. He plays f4, which is wrong, I think. Uh, here, yeah, immediately it says like black has equality. You don't want black to get equality so quickly in any chess game, right? Uh, of course, equality. But, and I go for this position where now, and like knight here, knight here, I don't think is accurate. Like, how does my opponent? You can't really develop the, this bishop. If you want to develop this bishop, maybe you will have to go this way and start an attack of your own. Which is, 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 uh, is actually possible. But then, yeah, again, like, I didn't expect him to take. Another move that didn't make any sense to me. Right? Sometimes, you, sometimes people look at trades and like, all trades are equal. No, there's no equality in trades. Not all trades are equal. There's always something. There's always something. Because this knight is very active, so many things. And then you just decide, okay, you know what? I'm just going to take it off. And that just doesn't make any sense to me. Now, queen coming in here, I do understand he wants to bring out his bishop. So I play a very interesting move here. He doesn't have to take. Again, he like, there's nothing I'm playing here that is forcing. But I think he's afraid he's going to like have to double his pawn. Again, like, it's not a big deal. If you doubled your pawns, that's actually good for you because now you can actually play the move d4. Right? So let's just make a random move here like this. Let's just make a random move. But he did. And now you get into this position where finally plus three because I'm winning the rook regardless of what you do. Um... You play this and I go in this way. And the lines I'm looking at is if you play rook here, I play pawn push. This attacks, this attacks. So I don't, it doesn't really matter what you do. You can't take with the bishop. You retreat with the rook, whatever. You, play, you weaken your position quite a lot. And you have to deal with all these ramifications of messing up your position, right? 
you have to deal with all of this right so um that wouldn't work uh the next thing i was looking at was you'd like maybe treat the screen and just use the piece but he chose to play this move i think he was expecting me to get over excited and take but yeah 